Let me take this opportunity to advise Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. As you sign your indenture, mm -hmm. read carefully to understand exactly how many years you are buying from your lease. Walk us through some of the mistakes you have seen people do in trying to acquire land. Every Ghanaian who wants to buy land is in a rush. That is our biggest mistake. We rush in acquiring land. What's the most important thing in real estate? Three most important things in real estate. Then they tell you it's location, location, location. 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 Right, let's now move on to the types of land ownership. Yeah. Um, in Ghana, we have four broad categories of land ownership. Four. So I'll take my time and walk through the four categories. Right. The very first category is state investor lands. Okay. We have the state investor lands. So it's two in one. So I'll start with the state lands. State lands are lands that have been acquired through compulsory acquisition by the state or even purchased in the past for public use. Okay. And these state lands constitute about 20% of the stock in this country. 20% only. You find that these state lands are managed by the Lands Commission because the state has given the Lands Commission the mandate to manage these lands on behalf of government. So the state owns the land in perpetuity. If I say perpetuity, I mean forever and ever. Okay. The land belongs to the state forever and ever okay. in perpetuity. Okay. Legally, they'll say it's an allodial interest. Allodial. Absolute. Okay. So the state owns the land absolute. All right. So the Lands Commission acting for the state can grant an individual a leasehold up to 99 years for residential, okay. and then up to 50 years for commercial activities. So any individual, a family member, a corporate entity can apply to the Lands Commission for a leasehold on a state land. 2% okay. of the state land is defined as vested lands. Okay. For vested lands, there are two significant characteristics. We have the legal ownership and then the beneficiary ownership. The legal ownership of vested land is vested in the state. So it is only the state through the Lands Commission that can grant a lease on a vested land. But the rent and the income accruing from vested lands are enjoyed by the stools. Even though they are money by the state through the Lands Commission, okay. the rent and the economic benefits that annual from the ownership go back to the stool. Okay. So why we want to know why certain lands are known as vested lands? Mm -hmm. There are reasons. Okay, tell us. Some of the reasons are for planning purposes. Okay. For instance, in Accra, not Yolu, part of the land is vested. Government wanted to plan North Jolu in a nice way, vested the land from the stool in the state. So North Jolu lands are vested on land use planning purposes. The other reasons why a vested land will be defined is through conflicts by chiefs. Okay. For instance, in Nkoko, Sunyani, and Winneba, we have vested lands over there. Okay. There were chieftaincy land disputes in, the, in those areas. So the government took over control of those lands and earmarked them as vested lands. Mm -hmm. So they, were, they are being managed by the Lands Commission, okay. but the rents from those lands mm -hmm. are given back mm -hmm. to the various tools. Okay. Just so peace would prevail. Exactly. So that's the first category. Okay. And the second category is the most common and popular Stool lands. Okay. I'm sure we all know stool lands. Mm -hmm. And we believe that anytime one wants to buy a piece of land, he wants to go to the chiefs or the kings to acquire land. The stools are controlling about 80% of the stock of lands. Okay. So stool lands are lands that are communally owned by members of the stool. In the northern part of the country, they don't have stool. They call them skin lands. Because their chiefs will sit on a skin. Mm -hmm. You know, stool land is connoted by the fact that our chiefs 
Sit on, okay. yes. <laughs> so on his stool. Okay. Yes. Interesting. So it's called stool lamb because the chiefs sit on his stool. And these are stool lamb because the chiefs or the kings are the custodians mm -hmm. managing these lands on behalf of the people. Right. So the stool lands are communally owned by the stool or the skin, and the chief or the king will transact on behalf of the community. The third category is the family lands. Okay. Part of Accra, we have an area called Bawi. I'm sure you are familiar with Bawi. Yes, I do. Bawi lands are all family lands. Okay. It means the land belongs to the families or the clans. So family lands are also very similar to the two lands because they belong to the community, wow. a smaller group known as the family. Okay. So the family head is the one who can only sign a transaction in respect of a piece of land. Mm -hmm. So family lands, clan lands are also communally owned and the, the family heads are the people who can transact in conjunction with the family members. And then the fourth category mm -hmm. is what I will call the private lands. Private lands. You and I. Okay. We may... We may have been lucky mm -hmm. to have inherited a piece of land that our forefathers or our grandparents okay. bought okay. outright. So if you have a land that was purchased outright and has been transferred to you, you, the individual, will become the alodia owner or the freeholder of that land. Right. So it becomes a private land. It becomes a private land. Yes. I would like us to pause here and go for a quick break. The conversation is good. Please, let's do five hours of this. I know my viewers <laughs> will definitely want more as well. But don't worry. There's a lot more to come. But let's go for a quick break. We'll be back shortly. You're watching the Buena Vista Homes Real Estate Show. We are back. You're welcome back. You're watching the Buena Vista Homes Real Estate Show. The show is proudly sponsored by Buena Vista Homes, where homes are not built but crafted. We are streaming live on Facebook and on YouTube. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. I still have with me um, Kwabena Enim. Kwabena Enim has been, he's teaching and I'm making notes. I hope you're making notes as well. After this episode, if you buy land and you make a mistake, please. That one you would have yourself to blame. But we don't want you to do that. So keep attention and learn a few things here. Kwame it's good to have you. Nice having you. We're enjoying the conversation. Let's not talk about freehold and then leasehold. I, I believe it also falls under ownership, ownership when it yes. comes to yes. Yes. You, are, you are right. You know, when you purchase a piece of land, you are not buying the space, as we all know. Okay. You are buying a bundle of interest in the land. And those interests are defined differently. Your interest could be a freehold interest or a leasehold interest. So what is a freehold interest? A freehold interest is having a land or a piece of land absolute. You are the owner in perpetuity. Okay. You enjoy using the land, occupying the land, and you have every right to transfer the use of that land to your generation after generation. Freehold. Okay. Free. Absolute. And this freehold is derived from the allodia interest that the chiefs and the family heads will sell to you. Okay. Once you buy from them, absolutely, it's a freehold. But the constitution does not permit transactions in that nature any longer. Okay. So after the 1992 constitution, mm -hmm. you cannot sign a transaction as a freehold. So all land acquired after 1992 are all leasehold. leasehold. Okay. okay. Unless you bought it as an individual, as I defined earlier on, okay. that is a private land. Okay. You own it absolute. Okay. Then you can sell it to somebody absolute. Freehold. But if you are buying from the chiefs or the family heirs, okay. 
they cannot sell a fuel to you now. You can have a leasehold. Okay. So a leasehold is a secondary type of interest after the freehold. Right. And as the name defines, leasehold, mm -hmm. it means you have the right to use the piece of land for a specified period. So your lease will can be for 99 years, for 80 years, or for 70 years, or even in some cases, 45 years. Okay. But this has to be mutually agreed between the parties. Okay. So a leasehold is what we call a terminable interest. It will extinguish at a point in time, depending on your tenure. So let me take this opportunity to advise Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. As you sign your indenture, mm -hmm. read carefully to understand exactly how many years you are buying from the lease. Read carefully to, to understand, understand how, how many, many years are being transferred to you. Right. Are you buying for 99 years, okay. 80 years, or 70 years? Because legally, the indenture will contain the duration of your lease. Right. But most often we don't read. Mm -hmm. So we don't even know the tenure that we are buying. Once you have a leasehold, you can also create a lesser interest known as a sublease. Okay. So if I have a 99 years lease and if you, are, you approach me that you want part of the land, I can decide to give you, out of my 99 years, give you 50 years. So the transaction will not be a lease, but it will rather be a, a sub lease. Okay. Because I already have a lease mm -hmm. with my lessor. Right. And I'm giving you part of my interest. So I'll give you a the, sub lease. The lessor is the person you bought the land from. The person okay. I bought the land from. Okay. Hey, you are learning very fast. <laughs> very fast. The person I bought the land from is the lessor. Okay. And I'm the lessee. Okay. So between the lessee and the lessor, the transaction is known as a lease. Or a leasehold. Okay. Now, if you decide to take part of my land and I give you 60 years, between you and I, the arrangement will be a sub lease. So I'm a sub what? You'll be a sub lessee and sub I'll be a sub lessor. Hey. So a sub lease <laughs> is a lesser interest. Right. We can even go further down. After a sub lease, we can do a tenancy. Okay. Yeah. I can decide to give you a tenancy for 10 years. You become a tenant and I remain your landlord. Okay. So these are the structures of interest that we have in a piece of land. Mm -hmm. So legally, it is said that a, land, a piece of land consists of a bundle of interest. Okay. A bundle of interest from the allodia, the freehold, the leasehold, the sublease, and the tenancy. Okay. So when you are buying a piece of land, you have to read to understand whether you are buying as a tenant, as a sub-lease, as a lease, or as a freehold. Okay. These are very important. We need to take note of it. We need to take note of uh, Is there any relation between one's nationality and, 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 and the amount of lease you get? Excellent. Okay. That's a very good question. Yes. Okay. Nationality is very important. As a Ghanaian, you are entitled to up to 99 years for residential. And you're also entitled up to 50 years for commercial. Okay. Foreigners are required by law to obtain up to only 50 years. Okay. Foreigners cannot get a 99 year lease in this country. Their limit is up to 50 years, regardless of the use. It could be residential, commercial, or industrial. 50 years is the cap. So if I buy a property from a real estate company that's owned by a foreigner. Yes. It means the lease I'm getting in there is 50 years. No, the company might be a Ghanaian registered company. Okay. So they would transact as a Ghanaian. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But if you're an individual, if you are buying from a foreigner whose lease is up to 50 years, remember that you are buying a lesser interest from him because he cannot grant you a, a more years than what he has. Right. There's a legal maximum known as Nemo that co non habit. This one I won't attempt to say it. Nemo that co non habit. <laughs> okay. It means you cannot give more than what you have. Right. Or you cannot give what you don't have. Okay. If I'm a foreigner and I have a 50 year lease, 
I cannot transact with a Ghanaian for 99 years. Right. Because I do not have 99 years lease. Mm -hmm. So legally, you cannot give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. All right. Interesting. Um, at the Land Commission, I'm sure you've dealt with a number of issues regarding land issue here and there. They've sold it to me. They've sold it to another person. Walk us through some of the mistakes you have seen people do in trying to apply land. I will summarize all the mistakes and say we hasten, we don't hasten slowly. Okay. Every Ghanaian who wants to buy land is in a rush. That is our biggest mistake. We rush okay. in acquiring land. You know, if you're, I remember when I bought my first car in 1992. Wow. What, what car was it? Mitsubishi Galant. Hey. Uh, <laughs> it was a top car. Okay. Days. You know what I did? I took the chief driver from my office, who picked a mechanic, okay. and we went to inspect the vehicle. Even though the vehicle was imported from Germany, I picked a chief driver, a mechanic, together to inspect and tested the vehicle. Okay. Because it came from Germany, there was a service manual in the car. Mm -hmm. We had an opportunity to study the study manual. And when we tested the car on the road, we were all satisfied mm -hmm. that it's a, a good deal to buy. You expect a typical Ghanaian to do more than this mm -hmm. when he's buying a piece of land. Right. But what do we see? We go to inspect the land with the money in our boots. <laughs> okay. Ready to pay. Mm -hmm. Ready to start construction. We need to go slowly and not to rush. The biggest mistake is we rush in land transactions. And I think we should hasten slowly. Buying land requires due diligence. Due diligence, the key word. Due diligence. Mm -hmm. Two ways, due diligence. Mm -hmm. But what goes into it is more than two ways. Right, right. So now let's, let's, let's then talk about some of the checks I'm supposed to do. What do I do at the due diligence, diligence level? Please? Yes. At that level, I will expect you, the potential purchaser or the prospective buyer, to request for the cadastral or parcel plan. Cadastral or parcel plan. These are technical. What are if that? I can explain yes, that before we go on. Yes. yes. We have a cadastral oh, oh, better plan. Better still, better still. Maybe we would hold on. And then come back to it. Exactly. Okay, let me finish and then we you come back best. to it. You are the best. I will have to explain a cadastral plan and a parcel plan. Okay. Yeah, but, but, but we'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's go for a quick break. Oh, okay. One. Okay. Sorry. Okay. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> I know you're enjoying the conversation, but don't worry. We are back shortly after the break. The show is proudly sponsored by Buena Vista Homes, where homes are not built, but beautifully crafted Get in touch with us on www.mybuenahomes.com on social media. Um, you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram as well. Just search for Buena Vista Homes. See you back shortly. Do stay. Welcome back. You're watching the Buena Vista Homes Real Estate Show. The show is proudly sponsored by Buena Vista Homes, where homes are not built, but beautifully crafted. Today we are discussing land acquisition, what the law says, just so you can buy your land safely in Ghana. And I have with me um, Kwabena Enim. He's a chartered valuer and a real estate investment expert, also former executive secretary of the Land Commission. So he's helping us have a better understanding what land acquisition actually entails. Enim, you're welcome back. Thank you very much. So you're talking about due diligence. Diligence, yes. So let me walk you through some of the steps or actions that I will expect a potential buyer to follow through okay. as part of the due diligence process. Yeah. First and foremost, you have to request for a parcel plan or a cadastral plan. Okay. I'll come back to explain the difference between the right. two. Yeah. A plan that you need don't ask for a photocopy. 
insist to have an original plan. How does that look like? It looks on a slightly yellowish color. Okay. Yes. Oh. Not a photocopy. Okay. You know, if you run a photocopy, you don't know the percentage at which the copy has been set. Mm -hmm. Okay. It might not be 100%. It could be at 80% or 70%. So the size of the land will shrink. The coordinates on the plan will also shrink. Mm -hmm. And conducting a search requires the technical officers in the Lands Commission to place your plan on their scheme and to relate your plan to what they have. So if the site plan is shrunk, it will not rest on the exact location on your scheme. Okay. So I always advise buyers to insist that the landowner should give them an original parcel plan or cadastral plan. Okay. Once you get that plan, walk into the Lands Commission. They have a Client Service Access Unit, CSAU for short, okay. Client Service Access Unit, and make an application for an official search. Sometimes they will try to encourage you, let's do an unofficial search. It will be quicker. Insist that you want to conduct an unofficial official search. search. Okay. The search will reveal all historical transactions on the land. Okay. They will reveal all historical transactions on the land. And if the person purported to be the owner of the land mm -hmm. has registered the land, his name will pop up. Okay. So that will give you an indication that you are dealing with the right person. So once you have the search report, read through and look out for the name of the person purporting to be the owner. Okay. You should find it in the search report. If it's not there, mm -hmm. that's a big question mark. Mm -hmm. As a lay person, if, if you think you cannot appreciate the content of the search report, I will encourage you to engage a land economist okay. or a valuer. Some lawyers have expertise in land law, mm -hmm. so they can assist. But I would recommend a land economist or a valuer for him to interpret the meaning of the search report, mm -hmm. for you to appreciate. I will expect that the search report will give you the historical, historical background showing the transactions that have occurred on the land previously. Okay. Once you have that information, the next thing for you to do is to visit the land. Right, Dr. Enim, thanks so much. Um, oh, thankfully, we have part two of this conversation, so our viewers would get to learn a lot more. You've said a number of things. Cadastra... Parcel plan, cadastra plan, all official of these searches. Cannot, see, they are beautiful. It's good to know all of these, but there's an easier way for you. Um, when you buy from Buena Vista Homes, the lands at Buena Vista Homes are titled safe. It's the safest, safest land. Safest that you can titled. get. Yeah. Right. So it, it, it cuts short all of the burden and all of the stress you have to go through in trying to register the land, do the checks here and all of that. It takes out all the risk. Exactly. <laughs> and so get in touch with Buena Vista Homes. Our lands are titled. You buy. We build for you beautifully. You can see the pictures rolling on your screen. I mean, what more could you ask for? Lay your property burdens on us, you know, as we often say, right? So, um, Dr. Enim, thanks so much. Thank you very much. Right. So, we'll bring you part two of this conversation in our next episode. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And with regard to land leases, yes. what's a renewal process like? Every lease or transaction or every lease document will give you the, the term of the lease. What explains why some registration processes are unable to go through? Uh, I'm afraid I have to say that. Yeah, if, if you buy from the wrong person, there's no way that document will go through. My name is Sophia Fusua. So this is part two, as I promised. I have my special guest with me. <laughs> I know you were enjoying our earlier conversation, <laughs> right? But before then, let's go for a break and we are back shortly.
Welcome back. You're watching the Buena Vista Homes Real Estate Show. The show is proudly sponsored by Buena Vista Homes, where homes are not built but crafted. Um, today, we continue with our conversation on land acquisition, what the law says, amongst other things. And you're privileged. I have with me Dr. Wilfred Kwabena Enim Odame. He's a chartered valuer and a real estate investment expert. He's also served as a former executive secretary of the Lands Commission and senior technical advisor at the National Planning, at the National Development Planning Commission. All right, so there's a lot to learn from him. Um, Dr. Enim, it's good to have you. Thank you. We, Thank we you promised to have you as part two, wow. and we're we here. Good. <laughs> right. I'm very happy to be here. I'm happy to. <laughs> right, so, um, the other day we ended on due diligence, the processes involved amongst yeah. other things. Walk us through the land registration process. So say I've done the due diligence, I've, I've done the checks, I'm satisfied, yeah. I want to go ahead with the purchase. What do I do? Okay. Once you are satisfied that you are buying a genuine land, All right. the landowner has to give you an indenture. That's the, the deed document. He has to sign as the owner with a witness. Okay. And then you, the buyer, also have, you have to sign with your witness. And then once the document is witness, you take it to the Register of Lands at the High Court for the registrar to also complete a portion of the indenture. Okay. Now you have an indenture in hand, you can walk to the Lands Commission for registration. But it depends on where your land is situated. If you are lucky and you have a land at East Legon okay. in Accra, right. then you should know that your registration process will be the land title registration. Okay. Land title. But if you happen to buy a piece of land in, say, Kufuridia, where we don't have land title, it means you'll be going through the these registration processes. Okay. So in Ghana, we have two registration processes. We have the title registration and then the deeds registration. So I'll start with the deeds registration. Right. The deeds registration covers all other regions except Greater Accra and part of Greater Kumasi Metropolis. Okay. So all other regions, deeds registration. For the deeds registration, you submit your indenture to the Lands Commission. The Lands Commission will vet the document and then accept it for registration. It will go through their system. The lawyers will have a look at it. The technical officers will look at the parcel plan or the cadastral plan. And then when they are convinced that you bought it from the rightful owner, mm -hmm. then it will be plotted in their records. Okay. The plotting process puts your name in their register. Okay. That will enable any future site to reveal your name. So it will be plotted. And then once it is plotted, it comes out with a registration number in red on the front page. And they are all unique. Unique. Hmm? Always the registration number has to be in red ink. Okay. You have it on the front and then at the back. Right. So if you are registering your land under this registration, at the end of the process, you should expect to have a copy of your indenture. They will always return just a copy. Mm -hmm. A copy of the indenture with various stamps at the back. But the unique feature that you have to look out for is the registration number. Okay. It will be at the top of the first page and then at the back. Right. It's normally a number with a slash and a year of registration. Right. So that's a this registration. So if you happen to be in Accra, Tema, mm -hmm. or part of Kumasi, then you are going to register your land under the land title registration. Right. The title registration. Again, for title registration, you still have to submit your indenture to the Lands Commission. They will process your indenture. They will conduct an inspection. For title registration, the Lands Commission will send their surveyors back to your land. Right. Whereas in the this registration, it is not mandatory for your land to be resurveyed. So that's the difference. W why is that the case? The title registration is a unique type of registration where they have to be very accurate right. and the parcel plan has to be modern and accurate okay. because the title registration will give you a certificate 
And the Ghana government is the guarantee okay. or the guarantor. Okay. The Ghana government is the guarantor going to give you a guarantee that your land is secured. Mm -hmm. So the Lands Commission will send their surveyors to your land, survey and prepare a new cadastral or parcel plan. And then as part of the process, they will request for a publication. I'm sure you've seen it in the spectators. Okay. Yes, I have. Yes. I, I have seen it. Your, your, your application will be published in the newspapers mm -hmm. for 21 days. Okay. That publication is supposed to serve notice to the whole world that, look, we are going to register this parcel of land with the details mm -hmm. in the name of a fear. Mm -hmm. So if you think you have any adverse claim, please come to us oh, and submit your claim. Okay. After 21 days, the Lands Commission will go through their mail to see if there has been any adverse claim in respect of your publication. Okay. In the absence of any adverse claim, they will go ahead to type your certificate and have it engrossed and sealed, and then you will be invited to come and sign for your certificates. Mm -hmm. So in Ghana, we have two systems. We have the DIS registration, whereby you end up getting your, your indenture with a registration number or the land title registration, you will begin with an indenture, but you go home with a land title certificate. Okay. So these are the two systems. Okay. We are hoping that eventually the Ghana government will support the Lands Commission to scale up the title registration mm -hmm. to cover the entire country. Ordinarily, how, how long does it take? Uh, in the past, we were doing seven months, okay. six months in some cases, and for Transfers, you know, we have transfers and first registration. Let me explain this. Okay. Yeah, we have first registrations and transfers. Mm -hmm. If I go to buy a parcel of land from a chief or a family or from an individual who doesn't have a land title certificate, mm -hmm. my application will be treated as a first application okay. because my grantor mm -hmm. does not have a certificate. Okay. So my application will be a first registration. That takes a longer time right. because they don't have the records, all the records that they need. But if I have a title certificate on my land, and I sell that piece of land to you, I already have a certificate, so I'm doing a transfer. transfer. Right. That could take about a month or maximum three months okay. to go through. So we have to distinguish between first registration and transfers. Yeah. It's easier and quicker to get a certificate for a transfer than first registration. First registration, yep. right. Um, I, have, I have a question still in relation to the registration because yeah. we've heard of stories where people try to register their land and, yeah. and, and it doesn't go through. Yes. So, but let's, let's, let's take a quick break. Yes. We'll be back shortly. Yes. You're watching the Buena Vista Homes Real Estate Show. The show is proudly sponsored by Buena Vista Homes, where homes are not built but crafted. Get in touch with us on 0303-401-401. Four zero one or zero five zero one three zero four seven two eight. We are back shortly after the break. Please stay. Welcome back. You're watching the Buena Vista Homes Real Estate Show. The show is proudly sponsored by Buena Vista Homes, where homes are not built but crafted. Today we are discussing land acquisition and what the law says. And I still have with me Dr. Anin helping us to understand all related matters. Dr. Anin, welcome back. Um, Thank you very what, much. what explains why some registration processes are unable to go through? Some documents are not able to go through with the registration. Yes, if you are, uh, I'm afraid I have to say that. Yeah, if, if you buy from the wrong person, mm -hmm. there's no way that document will go through. Yeah. You remember we said earlier on mm -hmm. that you cannot give what you don't have. Perfect. So if you are transacting in land and you deal with the wrong person, whatever indenture you hold in your hands, don't think it can go through. Yeah. Some documents are not able to go through the process because the historical information in the land's records do not conform with what is in the indenture. Okay. If you pick any indenture that you see 
on the market. Mm -hmm. The first page is normally devoted to talk about the, the background of the land. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's from a school, they've given it to a family, a family has given it to an individual, and that individual is selling to you. So the first page of every indenture gives the root of title. Okay. The root of title. So if that root of title in the indenture does not relate to what is in the land's records, I'm afraid mm -hmm. that document cannot be registered. All right. So le let me say it cloud loudly and clearly mm -hmm. that if you think you have an indenture and your indenture should by all means go to the land's commission, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. And that's the moral reason why we discussed earlier on mm -hmm. that the search at the Lands Commission is very, very critical. Right. That search will give you an information mm -hmm. about the ownership and who can transact in the land. Right. So not all indentures mm -hmm. are able to stand the test of time right. and cannot be registered. Right. Let me take you back a bit. Um, with regard to land leases, yes. what's a renewal process like? Yes. Yeah, that answer is, is provided in your lease. Okay. Yes, but because we don't, we don't, often we don't read our leases. Every lease or transaction or every lease document will give you the, the term of the lease. Okay. It will say either 99 years or 50 years. That's the term of the lease. It will give you the commencement date and then the expiring date. Right. And then it will provide a renewal clause. Three to six months before the expiration of your lease, apply to the lessor for a renewal. In this case, 80, it's, it's your grandparents who yes. are dealing with yes. the family you bought, the, the person you bought the land from yes. at that time. Yes. How, how is it like? You know, you. After such a long time. Yes, that's why you have a document. You have, you have to take note of the commencement date, the expir expiration okay. date, and then the term. And you expect your grand, your great great grandchildren to have access to the document, okay. and that's why they normally keep copies at the lands commission as a custody, as a backup for right. the owners. So you have to read what is in the document, and then it will also cite the owners. It will give the address of the owners. Right. So I will expect that you have to find a way to locate the owners. What happens if I don't go? If you don't. Go to them for a renewal. I'm, I'm afraid if you don't go for a renewal, mm -hmm. you'll be sitting in your property with no interest. Okay. Because the superstructure consists of bundle of interest, which we explained earlier on. Okay. And your interest, you have a tenure. Mm -hmm. And if that interest is expired, it's like eating an expiring food. Mm -hmm. It's poisonous. Okay. Let me, let me give a scenario. Yes. I bought the land at 100,000 cities yes. some years ago. Now my grandparents, my grandchildren have inherited. Yes. So they go back to the, they go back for a renewal. Yes. Um, at that point, do yes. I, how, how do they determine how much I'm supposed to pay for renewal? Exactly. Once you have the renewal clause, right. the law is behind you. Okay. That renewal cannot be unnecessarily denied. You can go to court and get the court to compel them to renew it for you. So once there's a renewal clause in your lease, you have a legal backing. So you have the confidence to work to the owners, provided you've applied within the stipulated time, three to six months. To six months. So put in your application, and they will define new terms and conditions, and also tell you for how long they are going to grant the new lease. Okay. That, those terms and conditions, by law, have to be mutually agreed upon. Right. They cannot impose the terms and conditions on you. Mm -hmm. They will say, oh, okay, we are going to give you another 50 years. Okay. And for the 50 years, you pay a premium or a lump sum of X amount. And then every year, we expect you to pay a ground rent of K. Will the amount be the value of the land at the time? The value, yeah, the consideration, we call it consideration. Okay. Every transaction has a consideration. Right. The consideration, it could be a price or it could be a rent. Okay. For leases, they are in two components, the lump sum and the ground rent. Mm -hmm. You pay a lump sum and then you pay a ground rent. Mm -hmm. The lump sum and the rent is determined based on the current value. Okay. At the time of the negotiation. If you have occupied the land for 90 years, 90 years when you go to negotiate, 
they will reassess the value of the land at the time of negotiation. Mm -hmm. But like I said earlier on, the terms and conditions have to be mutually agreed upon. Okay. And what I normally say is, before you go into the negotiations for the renewal, please consult a valuer or a land economist. Right. He will determine the current values mm -hmm. and then also advise you on the, what we call the floor price and the ceiling price. You know, we have a floor price and a ceiling price. What's that floor price? In between, you can always agree. The floor price is the minimum you can get. Right. The ceiling price is the maximum you can get. Mm -hmm. Between the minimum and the maximum, there's always a way of agreeing upon. Okay. So the valor will advise you that this is the minimum price and this is the maximum that you can go. But in between, go and negotiate for this level. So the negotiation will be between you and the landowners. Mm -hmm. And you have to agree upon it. If you feel they are being too hard, they are so strong, mm -hmm. and they are having a better bargaining power, you have the right to seek a court order. Okay. You can go to court with your application mm -hmm. and make your case out. Mm -hmm. Because there's an element of reasonableness. Okay. They have to be reasonable in their terms and conditions. So as, as, as a LSE, you have every right to enforce the clause in your lease. But make sure that there's a renewal clause, clause. in the lease. Make sure in a in the absence of a renewal clause, mm -hmm. your chances are 50-50. Right. Okay. In the absence of a renewal clause. Mm -hmm. So before you take a lease, make sure you have a renewal clause. Okay. In the absence of a renewal clause in your lease, the landowners have an upper hand against you. You are a weaker negotiator. Mm -hmm. okay. Because they may decide not to renew. Because there's no, they are not bound by any clause to renew for you. Mm -hmm. So insist always to have a renewal clause in your lease. Right. Is there anything that can make me lose my land? So I buy it. It's been there 10 years, 15 years. I haven't done anything on it. No, maybe you want to use your land for a residential or an industrial plot. Yes. So you bought your land. You just want to start your factory on the land. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. The ownership of land is different from land use regulations. Right. Yes. Okay. There's a law, the Land Use and Special Planning Act, 2016, Act 925, mm -hmm. mandates every property owner to go to the assembly and obtain a permit before you use your land. Mm -hmm. Having purchased a land gives you the right to use the land. Mm -hmm. But the assembly has control over the use. So once you buy your land, the next thing to do is to make sure that the use clause in your lease conforms to the clause or the scheme of the area. So you can't just buy land and start construction. You need a permit. Right. And in the application process, the assembly will determine whether that piece of land has been zoned mm -hmm. or earmarked for residential. Okay. If unfortunately, like I said earlier on, if the assembly had already earmarked the land for a refuse dump, it means you cannot use your land. Right. So we have the assemblies as the authorities for planning in this country. And you need a permit from there before you can you develop need a your land. From there. Let's wrap up the conversation with double sales. Um, 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 how, how common is this at the Land Commission? How, how common is this? D double sales, you've, people, people selling land to two people, the same plot of land to two people at the same time. And then what are, what are some of the charges that could be leveled against you when you indulge in double sales? It's criminal. Okay. Uh, but it's not something with the land commission. It's something in the real estate market. Right. It's, it's of a general concern. Right. The land market is developing. It's not yet developed. Mm -hmm. The market is developing. So these are some of the challenges or the weaknesses of the market. Right. Double sale. Okay. So it's, it's not common to find a property with a logo on it not for sale. <laughs> Which is the opposite. <laughs> you want to see for sale on buildings. <laughs> but in this part of the world, in our market, you rather find not for sale because mm -hmm. of double sale problems. Yes. It's, 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 a, it's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And it occurs because we rush. Mm -hmm. We don't do due diligence. Mm -hmm. Due diligence. Yes. I, I'm sure we, that's your favorite word. Yes, due diligence. That is the secret. Yes. So if you take your time, if you hasten slowly, mm -hmm. You walk through the A to Z of land acquisition. Mm -hmm. You'll be convinced that you are dealing with the rightful person. Right. You'll be convinced that the document given to you is genuine. Mm -hmm. you also be convinced that the document can be registered. Mm. Once you have all these assurances, 
There's no way another party can sell that land to a second prospective buyer. Right. So double sale can be avoided mm -hmm. if we hasten slowly. Hasten slowly, do your due diligence. Those are the final words of um, Dr. Wilfred Kwabena Enim Odame. He's a chartered valuer and a real estate investment aspect. He's also worked as a former executive secretary um, at the Land Commission and a senior technical advisor at the National Development Planning Commission. Now, one key word that's been running through our conversation is due diligence. We've walked you through the processes and everything. I know it's serious, yes, but I have a solution for you, please. If you don't want to go through all of this stress, end up buying land twice, paying for the same land twice, and all, all the related stress, please come to Buena Vista Homes. Our lands are titled, mm. is the safest. Mm. Even when you're not in the country, you just need to give us a call. Mm. We'll take you through a consultation process mm. and we'll have you sorted out. Buena Vista Homes has been building for over 20 years. A solid brand as this with a, a reputation worth dying for. I mean, what more could you ask for? So choose... Um, the easiest route. Call Buena Vista Homes on 0303 401 401 or 050 130 4728. Dr. Nim, thanks so much for Thank talking to Thank you very much for us. having me. It's been a pleasure. We would want to have some more of, of, of this conversation. I, I, I believe there's a lot more to discuss. I'm always available. Just a call. Dr. Nim has made a promise, so definitely we'll try to get him back to explain in further detail, you know, what the law really says um, when it comes to land acquisition in Ghana. So we are back on your screen next week with another power-packed edition of the Buena Vista Homes Real Estate Show. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel just so you don't miss any of our videos. And Thanks so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. I'll see you. Bye.